Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply. Let's make a video for the new folks. We're going to make a very simple but cool belt pouch. Now, the big point to this video, well, first off, we're going to show off a gorgeous leather. But secondly, we're going to pick up some basic techniques that we're going to use on every project. All right, so anything I use in this video, weaverleathersupply.com or check below. We've got links there. I'm going to take you straight to the website. Also, if you want to know when our videos release, just click your notifications. You'll know exactly when these come out. So let's step over to our pattern table. Get started. If we're new to leather craft, we're going to look at this pattern and think that is ridiculously complicated. I'll never pull this off. Actually, you will. And we're going to do a great job of it. Everything here is going to make sense. We're dealing with very basic measurements and very basic shapes. Now we'll look at what we're doing. Then we'll jump over to our digital pick for some specifics. So for the most part, we're just going to take a longer piece of leather, a shorter piece of leather. We're going to sew those together. There's our flap. We're going to add a snap right there on the back. All we have here is a belt loop. We're going to rivet that right there, fold it over and rivet it there. That's all we're doing. Now for measurements, five inch pocket. Now I'm going to add a half inch there for our bend, right? And then a three inch flap. So right here, five by five on that and easy measurements here, three by four. Okay. So let's jump over to our digital pick main body, eight and a half inches by five inches. There's our half inch for our bend. We've got six holes on the back of the main body, our belt loop and one on the front for our snap. There's our pocket five inches by five inches, easy enough. And our belt loop, those, those measurements are going to coincide with the back of our main body. How easy is that? It's already starting to feel comfortable. Good. Let's jump over to our main table because I've got a beautiful piece of leather for us to work with. And I am amazed we have not used this leather in a project video yet. This is beautiful. This is our Telfair pebble grain. It's a chrome tan, but it's a four to five ounce, so much thicker. This will make about a thousand motorcycle related projects, not to mention soft sided purse, bag pouch, so many ways we can go with this. We've got a beautiful grain on it and right here, a very cool natural edge. And in fact, I almost want to use that natural edge on our pouch, but let's go with the square end round corner, make it look a little bit more finished. Now the downside to this leather, almost impossible to mark and see. So we're going to make it easy on ourselves, but let's start right here. I've got a cut from a previous project, but I don't want to trust that. Well, first off may not be square, but also we may have overcuts from that previous project. So let's take a straight edge. And let's just cut off about a half inch, maybe a quarter inch, just so we know we've got a good straight line. Now, I do want to mention this as well. New blade or sharp blade always when we're working with our softer leathers, they're bad about rippling. Well, there we go. Easy enough. Okay. Now on our straight edge, we need five inch wide pieces. We're just dealing with a bunch of straight lines here. So let's make it easy. What I'm going to do, this is two inches wide. So I need to come in three inches from my edge. Good. Let's take our time, double, triple check because first off, I want our pocket to match perfectly, but also I don't want our flap to be a little larger or a little smaller because we were a little more rectangular than square. So let's cut this out. And really here, we just need about 14 inches. I'm going to come down to there. Okay. So let's square to our line. Good. Now let's use our square. So first off, I need eight and a half inches. Now I know that that line is perfectly square. Same on this side. Now we need five inches. and separate that. Okay. So there we go. Let's just double check. Perfect. That's a perfect meet. Okay. And in fact, well, there's our flap already starting to look good. How easy is it thus far? So now let's jump over. All we need is our belt loop. I'm going to use our scribe on this and I'm going to do my best to get a good scribe in this. Oh, I can see that. Now we could again, use our straight edge because this arm is three inches. We need three inches here. 
but let's do this. I'm going to drop this in square to my lines and let's just cut this right where it is. And now let's drop this on and let's do our best to press very hard because we're going to mark for the holes that we're going to punch. And one more for the snap on our flap. Good. We are not going to mark for our snap on this piece because this is the first time I'm making this project. So what we'll do is we'll get everything done. Then we'll bring this over, mark our pocket, punch, and set that part of the snap. Well, now for the next time I make this, I can mark that on my pattern. I know exactly where that is. Okay, we've got that mark. Let's step over to our punch table, drop in some holes. We can punch our holes with a revolving or a rotary punch. This is the center of every leather shop. It's a one-handed operation, multiple size holes. The only downside to this is that right here, I've got a hole out in the middle. I'm not going to be able to get there. Well, technically with a lighter leather, I absolutely can. But the point is, we're going to go with a dry punch. No longer one-handed operation. We've got to have a mallet and a board to punch into, but now I can sink a hole anywhere. Now, if I were only going to buy one of these to get started, I'd go with an eighth of an inch because we're going to set a lot of rivets with our holes and I want a smaller hole, but this is also going to work with our line 24. So right here, I've got six holes. And we've got one for our line 24 snap. Okay, on this piece, same six holes. Our holes are punched, easy enough. Now, we don't have to. This is gonna be on the back, but it would be nice to round those corners. That would be a nice detail. Now, with most leathers, we can cut a pretty decent round corner. So I'm gonna cut off that corner and then let's just cut off those two corners. Actually, that's not bad. But when we go over to a softer leather, it's a little bit tougher to do. But we have round corner knives. Now, this is not a dry punch. I don't need a mallet with this. But let's, right here, let's see if we can get that in a good camera shot. I'm just going to drop that on my corner and cut. There we go. Let's do two on one end. And that will be out. Okay, let's reset here. Let's add our rivets. We're going to go with a double cap rivet. It's the only rivet I use. They're easy to set. They look good, very strong. We've got a cap, then we've got a post with a cap on the back. That makes our leather work look good, even from the back side. Now we're going to go into the sizing and you'll see why. We've got a small, that's a quarter of an inch. That's good for two, four to fives back to back. That's what we're using. Next up is a medium. This is a five sixteenths. That's good for two eight to nines back to back. There's one more, a large seven sixteenths. That's good for three eight to nines back to back. Well, here's our problem. We've got a much softer leather, so I would certainly like the larger cap. But if we go through this with a medium, there we go. Notice how much post is sticking above that leather. I've set 100,000 rivets in my life. When I set that, it's going to offset. It's going to be a mess. So we're going to have to back off to a small. Well, that's not much cap for a softer leather. I just don't see that being durable over the years. Okay, well, how about this? And we see this so many times in leather work. Let's come up with an answer, but then let's expand on that answer and get creative. Okay, so we can just make little donuts. I punch these with a larger round hole, but we could simply cut these. We could cut small squares. Doesn't really matter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hole in the middle. We're basically chewing up real estate. So I'm going to take a donut. I'm going to put it on my, my medium rivet. Now let's come through. Okay. With this piece, we're going to turn this flesh side up and I'm going to point this towards our snap hole because we're going to rivet this and then fold it down. But the point is now notice how little post I have sticking up above that. That's going to be a good set, but we could also drop the drop this little donut in between that give us a little more room or actually this is a cool touch. Let's drop it on top, put that right there and drop our rivet in. Or maybe we even flip that flesh side up, 
So what's happening is we're taking a problem, we're finding an answer, and then we're getting creative with it. And again, we can do that in leather craft so often. So I'm gonna set three of these. Okay, good, we've got those. Now again, I'm gonna take our belt loop, notice our round corners, I'm gonna flip this flesh side up, and our round corners are gonna go towards our snap hole. Let's drop that in. Now, one of the things I love about a double cap I can snap that on without setting it. Where that helps is we can set multiple rivets at the same time. I can move my project around. I can actually see it's gonna, if it's gonna fit before I set the rivets. That's a big help. So with our rivet setter, we've got a concaved end that's gonna keep us from crushing or flattening that cap. Very nice. With that third piece of leather in there, that makes all the difference. Okay, we've got that in. I'm going to do the same thing on this end. Very good, very easy. And actually, that doesn't look bad. If I saw that, I would certainly think somebody went to the trouble to do it right. Okay, let's step back over to our main table. Let's tack our pocket on, get this ready to sew. We could go with our leather craft cement. This is oddly strong, but at the same time, leather, it's great for adhesives. It's very porous. We're gonna use what I think is one of our best products at Weaver. This is our double-sided tape. We actually have this in two sizes. So let's take our pocket. Now, on this, we don't have any holes, any markings, so we don't have to worry about left, right, up, or down. So let's just pick three sides, and let's add our double-sided tape. This tape actually is very strong. I'm always surprised. Now, the best way to get this off is I don't want to try to peel it, but let's take our fingernail and let's just scrape. There we go, that top piece of paper off, and there we go. And we've got that. So let's make sure we put the throat up, but let's lay this in, get this as close as we can. And there we are. Excellent. We've got a perfect meat all the way around. That looks good. Now, I forgot to mention a while ago, we used our 25 millimeter round corner for right here. Well, let's jump up to our 30 millimeter, and I'm going to do all four corners, the, ends on our, the corners on our flap and the corners on our pocket. Well, that looks good. Already it's coming together. And not a single thing we've done thus far has been difficult. Okay, let's jump back over to our punch table, drop in our guideline and our chisel. If you haven't stepped into hand sewing, you're gonna be amazed at how easy and fast it is and how good it looks. This is gonna be a beautiful stitch line. Now, typically, with about 99.9% .9 of the leathers out there, we can use a groover. This is basically going to groove along the edge of our leather or our edge, parallel to our edge. So now I can drop my chisel in there. I can actually feel that sit down in that line. So therefore, we're gonna get a very consistent stitch line. Well, now let's jump over to this leather because none of that is true here. This is gonna be hard to mark or groove, but we're gonna do our best. Now, I typically set this at one eighth of an inch. I don't want my stitch line too far in or too far out. One eighth of an inch is good for me. So what I'm gonna do is just slowly work this. Now, the camera may not be able to pick that up and I can barely see it myself. But the big point here, we want a very straight stitch line. That's what we're looking for. So let's just slowly work our groover around. And that's not great, but I think I can see it. Okay, let's step over to our chisels. This is the eighth inch flat, technically a lacing chisel. It's my all time favorite. It's gonna make this look just like a machine stitch. Now we've got a thicker leather here, but it's softer. So let's go with our six. What I'm gonna do is my first time, I'm gonna butt that to the outside of the throat. Let's drop this best we can down in our, in our groove line or scribed line. Good. Now I want to hit this as straight up and down as I can. What I don't want to do is lean in. Then I run the chances of coming out the side of the leather. So let's do our best 
to line that up in our groove line. There we go. And good, I've got tines all the way through. Now, the easiest way to pull this back out, I'm gonna put my finger down on the inside and I'm just gonna work it left and right. Let's don't pu push that into our finger. I've done that before. Okay, next time or next set, I'm gonna put the first tine in the last hole and I'm gonna do my best to get that right in that marked line. Good, we've got tines. Let's get down to our corner. Now, as we get down here, I'm gonna jump down to my four, but first time, last hole. Let's make sure we're in our groove. Good, now that goes through so much easier. It's just less steel to do it with. Now let's take our two time, first time, last hole, and let's just work our way around our corner. And as we get down to our end, let's come down to our four. Actually, that's almost perfect. We're going to have one tine on the outside. Okay, that is done. All we have to do now, knock in a stitch line, a snap, and we're done. We're going with a very simple stitch. This is called a saddler's or a saddle stitch. Looks just like a machine, easy on our hands, but exceptionally strong. So first up, our pony. This is gonna make hand sewing very comfortable to us. That's a big point. Right here are needles. John James number 18. It's the only needle I use. I love these. Now, these are hand sewing needles, so they don't have a sharp point because our holes are already pre-punched. On our thread, Ritza 0.8 millimeter. My favorite size, absolutely. But a big point here, we've got multiple sizes and some beautiful colors. Start with your 0.8 millimeter. If you're new to leather craft, start here and then work up or down depending on what you like. So we're gonna go four times our length on our thread. That may sound odd, but if we think about it, we've got an eighth inch thick piece of leather here times two, eighth inch tine on our chisel. So we're actually going twice the distance left to right as we are lengthwise. So let's start right here. We're gonna take one needle and we're gonna go through our first hole, which is just outside of our throat. It's gonna be a little hard to see the black leather here, but let's pull that out, equalize our distance, okay? So on our next hole, if we can find it, there we go. I'm gonna come through from the front. I'm gonna come through, th through from the back. Let's take those halfway through, okay? Let's make an X. I'm gonna move my fingers from the eye to the point and let's pull that through. So yes, exceptionally easy. Now, one thing here, we're going with a chrome tan. Veg tans have a good bit more body to them, so we can really crank down on the tension. Here, not the case. In fact, let's get two more holes put in, and then we'll work on our tension. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna pull that down just to where I can see it sink a little bit into the top grain. And that's all we're doing, a very simple stitch line. Now we can, instead of trying to pull tight, sometimes if we pull too tight, this is gonna ripple. One thing we can do, let's take our thread and pull it lengthwise. That's gonna help a little bit with our softer leathers. Okay, I'm gonna work my way all the way around to the other side. Well, how easy is that? It looks good. Now, I might go with a black stitch line on this pouch, but I like that white, and for the video, it's much easier to see. And in fact, hand sewing this, probably not even five minutes. So tedious? Well, it can be a little bit, but it can also be pretty fast. So now when we get down to the end here, we've got one, one hole outside. So let's add some tension. We're gonna go through our last hole. Let's don't pull too hard there. Again, I don't want this to ripple. Now, let's come back to our second hole, 
and I'm going to work through to the inside. We're basically just going to hide our knot on this side, going through one ply again to the inside. There we go. Now let's add some tension to those separately. Good. Now let's tie. Trying to figure out the best way to where we can see this. In fact, our ponies swivel. Yeah, there we go again to make it much easier. So now I'm going to tie a square knot. So right over left, circle around, and let's draw that down into the pouch. Okay, left over right, circle around, and let's draw that down into our pouch. Good, so basically our knot's hidden. Now we could go one more thread down, or one more, one more hole down if we wanted to. But now let's take our knife, and right here, I never used this part of my blade. So I'm going to put that right there, and I'm going to pull the thread across the blade. As opposed to cutting through the thread, that'll keep us from dinging our project. Those two little tails, let's just tuck those down in there. We're all told, hand sewing, easy, looks good, very strong. Let's step over to our punch table, set our snap, we're done. The first time I make a pouch, or anything with a pocket, I'm never sure exactly where my snap is going to land. Well, it's relatively easy on this, but it's a good technique. So let's do this. Let's lay our flap over comfortably, and then let's just mark. There we go. So now we know exactly where that is. We can measure this and now put that on our pattern. We could always hit this with a revolving punch, absolutely, but we've got a dry punch. Let's go with it. We're going to take some scrap leather. Let's push that down in. Now let's punch our hole. Good. Okay. Now with our snap, in fact, let's reset here. And there we go. Now with a line 24 snap, very common snap, we've got two females and we've got two posts. We are simply riveting those onto the leather. These pieces will bite. The point I'm getting at is that we can absolutely switch those, but we're going to go the route that is typically most common. Like I said, we've got some beautiful caps here. I'm not sure which to go with, but we've got a nice white stitch line here. Gives it a little bit of a western feel. How about we go with our floral? So let's start right here. Let's start with our post. This is our base. Notice a naked back, and let's push that up through our hole. Good. Now, I want this hole a little snug. We could go with a larger round hole, but a snug fit gives us more durability. So let's take our anvil. This is for setting our snaps flip it over, and let's put that down in there. We're going to take the piece with the inner flange on it. Now, if I talk to 10 people that have trouble with snaps, well, most likely the problem is we're using the wrong setter. So that's a line 24 and a line 20. Notice how very similar they are. So if we're crushing the post in our cap, most likely we're using the wrong setter. So let's take this, and I'm going to do my best to force that post down. We're going to get that to curl down inside. Yep, there we go. Notice that. Let's see. Yeah, there's a better shot. That's curling down. Now, I don't want to hit this so hard that it completely compresses the leather. But what I do want is to keep that from spinning on us. So let's hit that another time or two. One more. And there we go. That looks good. Okay, so over to our cap. Now, typically when we use a standard line 24, we've got an indent here that's going to fit that cap perfectly. Not the case here. So let's use a little trick. I'm going to take this. I've got my two pieces of scrap. I'm going to punch a small hole in one. Yeah, so that can actually sit down in there and give it a little cushion. So let's take this piece and we're going to do exactly the same thing. Let's drive that post down in there evenly. And one more. Good. Now that's not spinning. Okay. Let's see how this works. There we go. Very cool. Very simple little pouch. Love the decorative cap line 24s. We've got a very cool yet simple project. Actually, that's the point of this video. Well, other than to show off this beautiful leather. But if we're new to the craft, we now know how to make a very simple pattern. We can set rivets. 
hand sew, set a snap. These are all basic techniques and we're going to use these on every project. So take this information and blow it up into something beautiful. Good luck with your projects.